It is nighttime, and that means it is time to rant. What's crack a lack and literary geeks? Happy Tuesday. It is currently dark, as you can see, because it is 9 p.m., uh, because it's the only time that my neighbors are not making noise, because now everybody is home all the time, and for some reason at every hour of the day starting at about 8 a.m., someone is mowing their lawn, there are kids screaming, there are dogs barking, because everybody decided that now is the time to do all the home improvement projects and play out in the outside world like it's the 90s. I have also had a headache on and off for the last two weeks that is both more clingy and more annoying than two of my ex-boyfriends, and because of that I have just spiraled into a deep weird pit where I don't feel creative at all whatsoever. So I am in fact filming this video the night before it's supposed to go up, even though I had like three weeks to actually come up with something. So <laughs> I'm drinking coffee at 8 p.m. because I need to have a personality to summarize. I'm in a mood, and that's a mood. No surprise, the last little while I've been doing a lot of reading, both some rereading of old favorites, some reading of some new things, and God bless, reading a couple things on Wattpad. And by gathering such a large pool of sample data, I've noticed that there are a lot of things that I see over and over again in old, in new, in experienced, and inexperienced that I just, I need, I need y'all to stop. I also by coincidence ended up with 10 of these things, so I conveniently give you 10 things that you need to delete from your manuscript right now. I noticed I do this a lot in my speech, and I've noticed it a lot in writing, and I'm trying to stop in both places. People need to stop kneecapping their sentences. Kneecapping a sentence is when you add a small word that makes the entire whatever you're trying to say a lot less powerful. These are words like really, sorta, just. Like if you say the sentence, I kinda want some coffee, it doesn't sound as powerful or impactful as saying I want some coffee. The meaning is exactly the same, just the way you say it is a lot more weak demure, you know, it's like the girl that doesn't want to be bossy because she's raised well or whatever, but you know what, we all deserve to take up as much space as we damn well need to in this world, so just say what you actually mean. Write it what you actually mean, say what you actually mean. Get rid of all these little kneecap words. There, see, I just did it. Little kneecap words. Ah! Get rid of your kneecap words, kids. Next up is to get rid of villains that like to monologue. Unless you were in a Shakespeare play, nobody in real life goes, well, 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 or subsequently, I bet you wonder why I brought you all here. In one of my own stories, I have an antagonist who is introduced by saying, well, well, but it's because he's dramatic and that's the point of his character and he likes making big entrances. Like, you don't normally see people walking down the aisle of the grocery store going, well, 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 I see the broccoli is on sale this weekend. Unless you're making fun of it or your story takes place in a theater company, you don't need your villains to monologue, especially not with these extremely overdone lines. Speaking of overdone lines, can we please stop describing people having eyes blue like the ocean, eyes green as grass, hair as dark as the raven, like, oh my god, you are so boring. These similes have been done to death, like, there are plenty of other things in the world to compare things to. Um, you know what else is blue? My prescription painkill bottles, but you don't see me describing people's eyes like that, now do you? You know what other things are green? Seaweed bottles of absinthe. Just use your imagination. You're a writer. I'm sure you can do it. Another line that you need to cut out of your writing because it is so overdone is the I let out the breath that I didn't know I was holding. This is such a typical YA line that has been written to death. Cassandra Clare, I am talking to you. I just reread The Infernal Devices and so many characters are holding breaths that they didn't realize they were holding. I'm surprised that no one has passed out. If you want to talk about tension or you want to talk about someone being nervous, there are plenty of other ways to describe that and I even think the word nerds have a couple of videos about talking about the emotion thesaurus, so you can go look that up. I don't think I have ever released a breath I didn't realize I was holding. If I'm nervous, I'm gonna be fiddling, I'm gonna be shifting from foot to foot, just there are so many other ways to do it. Also, there are plenty of characters waltzing into manuscripts being like, hey Rachel, how are you? Well, hello there Rachel, I'm doing just fine. And like, nobody talks like this. Characters talking to another character, specifically using their first name, is so weird because nobody in real life talks like that. Think about how often you refer to your mother, sister, friend, boss, partner, by their first name. I can guarantee you it's almost never. The only time that I refer to one of my friends by their first name is if I'm trying to get their attention in a group of people, because otherwise I'm just gonna be like, hey girl, what's up? Or, you know, hey babe, how's it going? I, I don't even think my own friends have referred to me by Rachel in like 
three years. The only time to introduce someone by their name is, again, if you're in a group of people or if it's the first time meeting that character and you're actually introducing them or you're describing a character's nickname and you can throw in a sentence or two about how they got that nickname based on what their actual name is. Something that the Word Nerds and I talked about last week is to stop giving characters redemption arcs that end in them dying. I know I dress like the Grim Reaper 98% of the time, but that doesn't mean I want to constantly be around dead people. Redemption arcs are tricky as they are because you have to get the reader on your side of a character that they probably were made to hate. And having a character finally redeem themselves and pull themselves out of that darkness or that issue that they were having and have this big shining moment of realization and clarity, that's wonderful to read because it gives your reader such a satisfying ending. But then just killing them off is like, a, what, like what did you do all this work for if you were just gonna kill them off? Like sometimes character death is on purpose and it could be made to further the plot or further one of the characters. But if you're just gonna pull this character out and be like, no happy ending for you, dead. Like why do all these characters gotta keep dying? Like why can't you just be redeemed and then like go out for ice cream or something? I would read that book. And then something that I thought we were done with in the year 2020, but apparently we're not, and that is the stereotyped character. So you're for real telling me that the popular girl with the blonde hair only wears pink for her entire life and whose only purpose is just to make snarky comments at the main character. And you're for real telling me that the jock just goes and plays his sport and then stares at the wall for the rest of his life. Like, do they have a family? Do they do any other activity? Give them a hobby or something. Oh my god. You're gonna make a character a stereotype. That's fine. Stereotypes are there for a reason. But the whole point in writing a story that's your own is to change that stereotype or to make a comment about it, not just to write this one static character. Going along with that, y'all gotta stop killing the gays. Like, do I have to say more? Just because you have the one token character of color and the one token gay does not mean that you get to kill them off and then be like, oh my god, I'm being so inclusive because I'm not just killing off straight white characters. Like, it does not work like that. If you have a cast of 20 queer characters and you want to kill off a couple, fine, go for it. Knock yourself out. If you have one queer or one person of color in your story and you decide to kill them off, especially within the first five minutes, get you bonus points, you're not winning any awards and you're not being inclusive. Next to last is something that is more on a personal level, but I just, I need y'all to stop writing elemental magic plots, okay? It never works out and everything always feels like a tacky last airbender ripoff. I feel like elemental magic is something that a lot of beginner writers start off with, and I myself even tried that at one point, but I've hardly ever seen it in a YA or adult series where it works really well and I'm invested in it. Like, I'm willing to suspend my disbelief for a witch who can do plant magic, but I can't get on board with someone who can wield fire with their hands, okay? This is just not natural. And lastly, it's is the thing that started off this whole video because I realized this the other day and I like ranted to myself about it. Stop having your characters cut their palm when they're trying to make a blood sacrifice. Why? Why are you constantly cutting your palm? Do you know how many nerve endings are in there? As someone who has gouged their palm by a mistake a couple of times working at the bookstore, let me tell you, it's not fun and it takes forever to heal. I always see these characters in books and TV shows just like casually slicing their palm open and then the next scene they're like, it's cool, holding the sword, holding the shield, NBD, I'm not bothered by it, I'm just gonna have a cool scar. And I'm like, are you, I had like a tiny cut, like right here, it took three weeks to heal and I was useless that entire time. That was something I appreciated about A Darker Shade of Magic because the main character, who is a blood magician, he cuts his arm and he's just like, Boop, and then he like takes his finger and like does a spell with it. I'm like, oh my god, finally somebody with common sense. <laughs> so there you have it. I am feeling the caffeine hardcore right now, and I feel like now is the time that I need to like start calming down. Maybe, you know, take my makeup off, change it to some sweatpants, because when this caffeine crash hits, I have a feeling it's gonna hit hard. <laughs> I need to go to bed. Of course, take all these things with a grain of salt. If you really like them, that's fine. You do you. You write them. Prove me wrong that elemental magic isn't good. Please leave down below your own writing sins, things that you hate in books, things that you think are funny, things that you just keep, you know, seeing repeated over and over again that maybe, maybe we should stop. Join us at 7.30 Eastern Standard Time here on Sunday for our live chat. This week is our book club and we are going to be doing Getting in the Ninth by Tamsin Muir, which conveniently matches my outfit very nicely. I hope to see you guys all there and that you have a good rest of your week. Bye!